Hey Algebra 2. Today we're going to start a new section and it is called Systems of Equations. So the first way that we are going to learn how to solve a system of equation is by graphing two lines on one coordinate plane. A system of equations is just simply two or more linear equations. The solution to a system of equations is always an xy ordered pair that makes all the equations true. When you have a system of equations, you basically end up with three possible scenarios. The first scenario is that the two lines cross, and this is what having one solution looks like. The second scenario is that you get parallel lines, and since parallel lines don't cross, this is what no solution looks like. And then sometimes you have this instance where you graph the two lines and they're sitting on top of each other because they're essentially the same line. And this is what we call infinitely many solutions. So let's start by graphing. I know that we practiced the other day, but let me refresh your memory. Step one, you will plot the y-intercept. Step two, you will use slope to get more points. And your slope is rise over run. Step three, repeat for your second line. And step four, your solution, you're going to write as an xy ordered pair where the lines cross. So on this first one, we already have it in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to graph the top equation in blue. So that's the slope, and that's my y-intercept. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept at 2. The implied number in front of that is 1. So I'm going to go up 1 and write 1 many times. And then I'm going to take a straight edge. Now I'm going to draw a line through the entire coordinate plane because I do not know where the lines are going to cross. So you definitely want to make sure that you extend it through the entire plane. I'm going to do the second one in red. We're going to repeat the process. So there is my y-intercept at negative 2. So I'm going to plot that point. And your slope is 3 or 3 over 1. So from here, I'm going to count up 3 and write 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. There we go. And you will count until you cross the line. Don't stop until you cross it so you know exactly where they cross so you know what the coordinates are. All right, so your solution is right here. That's your solution, because that's where the lines cross. And if you st start at the origin, looks like I have, I have to go over 2 and up 4. So I'm going to write my solution as 2 comma 4. I'm going to do a couple more. I'm 
going to do this middle one. So I have 2x minus y equals negative 1. So on the first one, I had y all by itself. I don't have y all by itself, so that means I'm going to have to subtract 2x to send it over to the other side. So then I have negative y equals negative 2x minus 1. This y still has a coefficient of negative 1. That can't be there, so I'm going to divide every single term by negative 1. Negative divided by negative is positive. That's also positive. That's also positive. So now I'm going to graph the line 2x plus 1. So I start at 1 on the y-intercept, and from there I count up 2 and over 1 a handful of times. I might need to count down and left as well. And I'm going to take a straight edge and connect the dots. Now I'm going to repeat for the other one. 5x plus 2y equals negative 16. So we want it in the form y equals mx plus b. We want y on one side all by itself. So you're going to have to subtract the 5x over. Get 2y equals negative 5x minus 16. You have to get rid of the 2 out in front, so you're going to have to divide every single term by 2. y equals negative 5 halves x minus 8. So this has a y-intercept of negative 8, and that has a slope of negative 5 halves, so that means I should go down 5 and right 2. Well, I'm going to run out of real estate if I do that, and nobody cares if the negative is in the numerator or denominator. So I'm going to move it to the bottom, so then I'm going to count up 5 and left 2. One, two. Alright, so I have three points. I have more than enough, and I did go through um, the other line. So there's my solution right there. So it looks like it's negative 2, negative 3. And uh, the other two are going to work the same way. Uh, check my notes for completed details. I'm going to move on to the back side. It says, what is the solution to the system? So I have my system of equations here. And my job is to pick out which one is the correct graph um, that goes with this. And so what I have going on in my head is y equals mx plus b. So I have a slope and I have a y-intercept. So I'm basically going to pretend that I'm going to graph each one of these. So this top one would have a, a y-intercept at 1. Okay, that one does. And that has a slope of 5. So if you count up 5 and over 1, looks like that's the correct line. The second one has a y-intercept of negative 5, which it does, and it has a slope of negative 1. So you have to remember that negative slopes always go downhill. So that's basically up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1. All right, so this one has promise. This is the one that I think I like. Let's double check the others. All right, so the other one, uh, y equals 5x plus 1. So I do have a y-intercept at 1. But when I count up 5 over 1, I don't have that. So they messed up the slope. So this one is a no. They seem to have the wrong slope. Uh, here, when I start checking this one at 1, I don't even have a y-intercept there. 
so that one's a no. And then same thing here. Um, that one doesn't even have a y-intercept. So when you're trying to uh, figure out which one is the correct system of equations, you really just pretend that you're graphing each one of them and see which one uh, matches. What is the solution to the system? All right, so before we teach you any other techniques, we're going to teach you how to substitute. So I have these four choices here. So every ordered pair is always x, y. So I'm going to plug 1, 2 into both of them, and it has to work in both, and then that's going to be my winner. All right, so for a, so y is 2, so that would be 2 equals 4, and x is 1 plus 6. Well, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 6 is 10. There I would have 2 equals 10, but that's a false statement. So that is how I go about eliminating A. Let's do the same thing with B. So Y is negative 6, and X is negative 3. That equals negative 12 plus 6, negative 6. That equals negative 6. That's a good one. All right, so it has to work in both of them. So now you have to plug these numbers into the y equals 2x. It has to work in both. So once again, I have negative 6 equals 2 times negative 3. That equals negative 6. That's a good one. So that one is my winner. And so if I hadn't come to the correct one yet, I would have repeated this process for uh, C and D. Question 7, we have a word problem. And this is one that I pulled off of an SAT prep question. This graph shows a relationship between the number of stocks at company A and the number of stocks at company B. It says, write an equation that could represent this relationship. So any time that I see a line going through the, that touches the y-intercept or goes through the y-axis, I generally write out the equation in slope-intercept, and I'm going to write an equation um, that matches up with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find the slope of the line. So the slope, you have to remember, is rise over run. So from this 40, I would have to go down 40 and right 60 to get to another point on the line. So I have negative 40 divided by 60. I'm going to simplify and reduce that, and that reduces down to negative 2 thirds. The B is your y-intercept, and I can see that right there is 40. So now I have my m and my b, and now I'm just going to plug them into the formula. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 40. Put out. Last one. Tom has a CD collection with 30. Nita has 18. Tom is adding 1. Nita is adding 5. When will they have the same number of CDs? I don't know, so I'm going to have to write an equation for this. I always try to write it in the form y equals mx plus b if I can. So m, the slope, is also the rate of change. It's the rate at which you are adding or subtracting something. And so this is going to be the number that you add to it every month. And then B is always going to be your initial amount. All right, so I'm going to focus on Tom first. Tom has 30 CDs. And he is adding one CD per month to his collection. 
All right, so in mx plus b, it's how many is he adding to it? So he's adding one per month, and then he has an initial amount of 30 CDs. It might be a little bit hard to see on here. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, your x-axis is almost always time. So that's time. And then your y-axis is going to be your total. And so I know it's hard to see, but I did count by fives to help you out. So there's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. All right, so it has a y-intercept of 30, and it's going to go up one per month. So if I go up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. So basically, um, it's going to take me five months to add five more CDs. And then uh, to have 40 CDs, that's going to take me five more months. And get your straight edge. Come on. There we go. Now let's write an equation for Nita. Nita has a collection of 18 CDs, and she's adding five per month to hers. All right, so that is her M, and that is the B. So for Nita, we would have 5X plus 18. All right, so we have a y-intercept of 18, so I'm going to estimate it about there. And when I, since these count up by fives, when I go up five, I'm basically in the middle of a grid line again. Go up five, over one, up five, over one. Oh, there's my winner. Up five, over one. So here's where you just have to be careful of what it asks you. It says, in how many months will they have the same number of CDs? And so when you follow it down, uh, that would be, it crosses at three, so there's my solution. So they will have the same amount in three months. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day.